What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're out here tonight and I want to test the hydraulic pressure on my Mahindra 8560 tractor here. And I'll tell you the story why. Uh, the tractor is strong and everything. I've picked up a lot of stuff with it. But I've got this uh, back axle half off of an 18 wheeler that's cut off the frame chop. It was cut off right behind the, uh, the sleeper. And so it's just the tires, it doesn't have any tires and wheels on it, it's just the axles, uh, field wheel plate, frame rails, uh, brake drums and all that. Well, I carried my tractor over to my parents' house because uh, that's where this uh, frame chop is, this the back half of the state team wheeler. And uh, anyway, I went out there and I was going to check it to see if I could get the brake drums off of it uh, because it had some decent brake drums on it. And uh, my friend picked this up with uh, his new Highland tractor is how I got it over there originally uh, for me. And uh, anyway, it came off of a wreck truck from a long time ago that we bought. Uh, me and him actually bought it together and uh, stripped it out, parted it out. Uh, anyway, I wound up with the back half of it somehow. But uh, anyway, he had picked it up and uh, with his new Highland and put it on a trailer for me. And so I figured that this tractor here would pick it up without any issue. Well, I tied on my bucket hooks right here and I could not pick it up. And so I tied a chain, you can see the marks right there. Uh, I threw a chain across right here. This is the pivot point, pretty much. And uh, this tractor is ready to pick up 4,100 pounds, supposedly at the pivot point, all the way up in the air. So most of the time these loaders will pick up more down low than they will all the way up in the air. So if it's rated at 4,100 pounds at the pivot point all the way up, it should pick up more than that down low because I only had it like the loader maybe four or five foot. I just needed to pick the thing up and move it. Anyway, I did get it picked up, but barely. Uh, did have the bucket still on it. But uh, so it makes me think that maybe the pressure may be a little bit low or either that thing is way heavier than I think it is. I wouldn't think that thing would be over 4,000 pounds. Maybe it is. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so I ordered this... Uh, gauge here and a hose. I uh, got this from Hydraulic Surplus Center. I uh, ordered a fitting. This fitting fits the loader valve. Surplus Center didn't have it. I had to get that from Motion Industries. It is a faster, 3 8 faster poppet check valve fitting is what that is. Uh, 5800 PSI hose. I think this is like a four foot hose, whatever I had in stock. The length really doesn't matter as long as it works for your application. I also ordered some more fittings over here for uh, just in case I want to test something else kind of deal uh, that I might need some other stuff to, to hook up. And so this is your standard uh, Pioneer style uh, for the rear remotes on the back of most tractors like those. Uh, you test those with that. And these other things here are just reducer bushings and that sort of thing. Uh, that way you can adapt from this 3 8 hose, say if you needed to go to something else, and that's all national pipe thread. Uh, see this here is a 3 8 to quarter inch reducer bushing, and I think I have uh, a half to 3 8 or something and vice versa. That way if you need to convert back and forth, and a lot of times on the tractor, you do not have to buy this in. You could actually take it off and use uh, some kind of bushing to convert, change the thread around uh, to whatever this is. I think one of these is a SAE to uh, National Pipe Thread. I think that's what I ordered. Uh, I wasn't sure if this fitting here was going to come in, it was going to be right or whatnot. And sometimes anyway, you can take the fitting off of the tractor loader here where they quick connect and uh, actually make it where it goes where you can hook it up here. That's a messy way of doing it, but if you can't get a fitting or if it's a weird fitting or something uh, and you can adapt it on here, you can just take it off this hose here, put it on here, connect your pressure gauge that way and uh, check it that way. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is figure out, I wanna test, I guess I, I, I would like to put it on the pressure side of the, uh, on raising it up is what I would like to do. I don't think it really matters because any which one of them you hook to, it's just going to depend on which way you move the lever because there's only one pressure relief valve in here and it's adjusted right here. So I don't think it matters. So I got to figure out which one of these is easiest to get to or 
as I say, I would really like to use the, the one that raises it just to be, so when I pull down this handle, you know, I can test it that way and it'll be a little simpler, but it doesn't really matter, I don't believe. But that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the camera down and I'm gonna unplug one of these quick connect things here and this gauge here should connect right in there. And we're gonna check and see what the uh, hydraulic pressure is on this and if it needs to be adjusted we're going to adjust it uh, because at some point in time, I will have to pick those axles up and put them on a trailer and do something with them. Uh, I'm not sure what that's gonna be yet. But uh, anyway, so I'm just gonna check the pressure in this and uh, let me get this gauge hooked up. All right guys, I've got the uh, gauge here hooked up. I just disconnected this bottom one here. I didn't bother looking and see which one it went to. I don't know when I crank it up and go to moving the lever around which one it is. Uh, and go from there, because like I say, it all works off the same pressure relief. Um, so I'm not gonna too much worry about it. Just gonna start it up and move this lever around and see which way uh, makes the pressure gauge go up and does not move the loader. And I'll know which way to move the joystick at that time. So here we go. It's supposed to be, uh, this tractor from the specs I've read, is supposed to be 2700 or 2690, so basically 2700 PSI is what it's supposed to be. So we'll see what it is. y'all help me out with this I know I got some smart people on here watch my channel uh, I have trouble with this uh, thread sealant everybody says how great this stuff is but seem like when I use it about half the time I have leaks I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong uh, I don't know if this stuff is just crap or if I'm not doing it right or what but uh, this is what I'm using It's the permatex thread sealant with PTFE um, it just seems like I have leaks when I use it and if I use uh, Teflon tape Like you're not supposed to do with uh, hydraulic valves and uh, Air valves and that sort of thing because there's a chance that, that stuff can get off in your uh, in the line itself I don't have leaks, but when I use this as you're supposed to have leaks I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I mean I put on put it on there and then tighten it up and uh, For some reason it leaks. I don't know Let me know in the comments all right guys, I've got, uh, took the fitting back off and put some more sealant on it, tighten it back up. Uh, hopefully that fixes it, I don't know. I don't know why I have so much trouble with that stuff, but I always seem to. So I've got this snake through the steering wheel here, so maybe it'll hold it. And I've got my wrench, uh, Allen wrench there, and my wrench to break the jam nut loose. And uh, I guess I'll go ahead and break the jam nut loose like that and then we should be able to turn this in a little bit i don't know how much 
is what, but generally in, I think is the direction to go. I'll drop my Allen wrench. I'm trying to keep it, that's where it was. I want to know how much I turned it. That's a quarter of a turn right there, or almost a quarter of a turn. So I'm going to uh, try that and see where we're at. And then uh, we'll go up or down from there as needed. That did not fix my leak on my gauge, that's for sure. I guess I'll put some Teflon tape on it. That's just bubbling out of there. I don't know why it's doing that. But uh, that's about a quarter of a turn right here. Just over a quarter of a turn. And that took us to uh, 2,800. I do not want to go any more than that, I don't think. But we were at 2,550. Uh, so 2800 is a good 250 PSI bump um, and as I say the book says 2690 so right around 2700 so we're 100, 100 PSI over spec which I don't think is going to hurt anything uh, I think generally as long as you're in within 10% pretty good so uh, anyway I'm going to tighten this jam nut back down here and hopefully that won't move <coughs> <clears throat> we can test it one more time all right guys so i uh, had to do a little bit of fine tuning there uh, as you've seen in the last clip if i hold it wide open uh, i've got right at 3000 psi but about 1500 rpm is where you're going to be using your loader at where i checked it to start with that i had 2550 i've got about 2800 so I've bumped it up about 250 PSI. Uh, I don't think it was low to start with, but I know that it wouldn't pick up what I was trying to pick up. So a little bit of a pressure bump, I don't think will hurt anything. Uh, the hoses are rated at 3000 PSI. I'm pretty sure the cylinders are as well. I think that's pretty common on these uh, style cylinders here. I don't know if it says anywhere on there. Yep. Working pressure, 3,000 PSI. So going off of that, and uh, I figured the pump should be good at that. I mean, that's only a 10% bump, or yeah, about a 10% bump on. Uh, if you had 2,700 to start with, 270 pounds would be 10%. So hopefully uh, that goes well. That should increase lifting power close to 10%, I would think. So if they rated it at 4,000 pounds, uh, does that mean it'll pick up 4,400? I don't know. But uh, anyway, I did not, when I was trying to pick it up, I did not have it wide open. I had it about, I don't know, 15, 1600 RPMs. Uh, looks like I could have got a little bit more lifting power if I would have held it wide open. I don't really like running things that way. But uh, I figured, you know, 15, 1600 uh, RPMs should be enough pressure and enough flow uh, to get it lifted up, but the reason the uh, the pressure increases as you raise your RPM as well is because uh, the amount of fluid, you're increasing the fluid flow 
across the pressure relief valve. So it's a restriction right there and it's, it's letting the pressure go up a little bit higher than what it should be. But uh, anyway, so it's not good to do that for over a few seconds at a time. It creates lots of heat through that restriction, pushing that fluid through there. But uh, anyway, hopefully we got that uh, taken care of to give me a little more lifting power. And you usually, I mean, you usually normal loader work, you're not gonna be, unless you uh, raise your loader all the way up or down or, or whatever, one function or the other to use your pressure relief valve, the pressure is not gonna be that high under normal, normal circumstances until you overextend the cylinders and hit the stops. Or if you're trying to pick up something super heavy like I was. So that's probably not gonna happen a whole lot, uh, just normally picking up small stuff and letting the loader down. You're not even gonna be using that full PSI range uh, that I have it set to. So anyway, hopefully it doesn't shorten the pump life too much. Uh, if it does, I guess we'll put a pump on it. But anyway, that's uh, all for this video. As I say, hope I took care of the problem. Uh, that teaches you how to raise your hydraulic pressure if you decide to want to, or if you decide to decrease it for whatever reason, or check it, maybe you just want to check it, and see if it's uh, the correct spec or whatnot. So thanks for watching, and uh, click the subscribe button, all that good stuff if you hadn't already. We'll see you guys in the next video.